Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get um, get started with a couple of housekeeping items while more people are joining in. Welcome. We're so glad that you're here. This is Cougar Career Academy. Um, our panelists who graduated during the Great Recession. So we're really excited to have you all here today. Just so you know, you are muted and are unable to unmute yourselves. Um, however, the chat function is live. Um, you can click on the icon there at the bottom of your screen. If you have a question, you can ask a question at any time, um, or you can type, I have a question that I would like to ask and I can unmute you um, so you can ask our panelists your question. And um, again, feel free to ask those questions at any time. Um, we're welcoming those throughout the presentation. And this presentation is being recorded, just so you know. Um, a link to the event recording will be emailed to you after the event has taken place. And you can also um, view the event recording at that link there. Um, which will be in the email for your reference. So I think we have a good portion of people joined in at this point. So I'll go ahead and start introducing our three panelists today. First, we have Bridget Adams, who is the Director of Events um, with the Cougar Athletic Fund. Bridget joined the Cougar Athletic Fund in 2011 after graduating from Washington State University with a degree in agricultural advertising in 2010. A native of Pomeroy, Washington, Adams was named the Director of Events in 2014 after serving the Cougar Athletic Fund for two years as the program assistant. Adams directs the Cougar Athletic Fund events across the state, including Night with Cougar Football, Hall of Fame Banquet, and Coog Legends Golf as just a few examples. So welcome, Bridget. We also have Tony Poston, or Poston, I'm not sure the correct, the correct pronunciation. Um, he's the president and CEO at College Hill. Um, Tony, um, like I said, is the president and CEO at College Hill, a branded merchandise studio founded in Pullman in 2011. His visionary leadership helped College Hill grace lists such as the fastest growing private companies in America in 2016. As a WSU student, Tony was a leader in ASWSU, IFC, and the SEB. He graduated in 2007 with a degree in political science and went on to manage West Coast musical artists and produce band merchandise. Recognizing his own knack for developing promotional goods for events, he launched a custom merchandise company that would be a precursor to College Hill. And Tony lives in Pullman with his wife, Emily, and remains a diehard coog to this day. And our third and final panelist, Kaylin Olson, who is currently a meditation teacher. Kaylin graduated from WSU in 2009 with a Bachelor of Arts Communications degree and a minor in Spanish. During college, Kaylin was on the Panhellenic and worked with Cougar Quest and the Washington State University Foundation. After graduating during the recession, Kaylin moved to Albuquerque, New Mexico, and worked with the University of New Mexico College of Pharmacy Alumni Relations team. Kaylin wrote copy for the alumni newsletter and organized a statewide flash mob. Most recently, Kaylin moved back to uh, PNW and gained experience as a middle school Spanish teacher working in the Portland, Oregon area. In 2019, Kaylin blended her love of teaching and writing and opened up her own business coaching and providing meditation services. Kaylin works with people who want to heal anxiety and thrive in any area of their lives. Perfect. So we're really excited to have all three of these panelists here with us today. Let me just make sure we're in the right view here. Awesome. Okay, great. So if you're just joining us, a quick reminder that you can ask questions at any time. Um, from our panelists by chatting um, in Zoom, and I can either unmute you or just read aloud your question. Okay, so let's get started. Um, how about Bridget, let's start with you. Can you tell us about your time at WSU? What was your major? Were you involved in any student groups? Give us some background there. 
Yeah, so I was um, a participant in two colleges, um, the Murrow College with my advertising and communication, um, but then also Connors where I studied uh, kind of a general degree in agriculture, um, really with the vision of helping in agricultural advocacy is um, why I ended up at WSU. And you could say I was over-involved as a student on campus. Um, so I was in a sorority um, and held a leadership position throughout my time um, at the sorority. I was part of the recruiting ambassador team for the Connors College. So we went to high schools um, around the state and recruited high school students. Um, that was also a part-time job for me as I was the president of that group. Um, and then joined some other clubs and had um, uh, numerous other jobs on campus in my time there. So um, spent a lot of time in campus clubs and organizations. Perfect, that's awesome. Great, and um, Tony, same question to you. All of your experience at WSU, could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I, um, I graduated in 2007 with a degree in political science and uh, stuck around for an extra year of victory lap and got a degree in criminal justice. Um, when I was at WSU, I was really involved with my fraternity. And um, the first position I ever held, uh, leadership position, was for philanthropy chair, um, which surprisingly, um, or coincidentally, I should say, I planned a big concert and sold t-shirts to fundraise for Children's Miracle Network. And that kind of was a precursor to my career in uh, merchandising and band management. Um, I got really involved with the student entertainment board. Uh, back in the day, it was called ASWSU Student or Entertainment Committee. And then in 2004, we changed it to the SEB. So that's what people know it as now. Um, and the Interfraternity Council as well. So I graduated thinking I was going to go into entertainment law. I thought that I would possibly go to law school um, in the fall of 2008. But in May of 2008, I decided to get in a van with six of my best friends and tour the country in a rock band and um that was fun for a while um but i kind of saw the writing on the wall that i didn't want to live in a van and eat taco bell for every meal so um i figured out a way to uh still continue on working in the music industry and actually make a living and that was through merchandise so um things have changed a lot since then but um everything that i did in college kind of led me to what i'm doing now perfect Thank you so much. And Caitlin, um, I know we kind of read some of the things you were involved in, but can you tell us about your time at WSU? Yeah, of course. So I was in the sorority Cap Alpha Theta and that was just a huge, huge, um, I guess, opportunity where I was able to develop a lot of my skills and communication skills. I helped organize some events for our sorority. We did Rock the Casa, similar event where it was like a music event where all the fraternities and sororities could come and we raised funds for Casa, Court Appointed Special Advocates, um, which is an organization that helps support and advocate for children who don't have someone to advocate for them um, when they need to in the legal system. And so uh, I just really fell in love with organizing groups and creating a shared passion that stemmed from the idea that you can have fun and raise money. And so that passion also allowed me to step into more of a leadership role at the Washington State University Foundation as a student intern. And so I kept, I kept cultivating a lot of my love of writing and creativity in that role. And then that helped me to graduate, to go on after that to work um, with alumni relations as well at the um, UNM College of Pharmacy. So those were some of my passions. Um, I also mentioned that I was part of Cougar Quest. This was a, an academic kids camp in the summer. So again, like my love and passion of being with groups, creating synergy, um, creating something meaningful and fun with, that's also educational. So I was able to jump in and get involved with that. And then on Panhellenic, I also um, worked with groups in the setting of being a new member educator. So I worked with um, all of the people who are going through recruitment um, to help train them. And then I also 
worked with the um, junior, um, I can't remember what it was called at the time, junior uh, panelytic, junior IFC and panelytic, that's what it was called. And at the time we were about to tank and go under and my boss said, you guys got to revive this or else we have to say goodbye to this group. And so um, we brainstormed and put together this um, platform to serve the community and to raise funds again, but in a fun way. So we put together Mr. Greek and it was a like fashion sh show slash entertainment and it ended up going on to produce each year after that and it continued to grow so that was a ton of fun and it brought a lot of impact to the community as well awesome. sounds like all three of you are pretty involved in that's, that's great um okay so our next question what was the overall attitude about the economy and job market at the time of your graduation and were you nervous about finding work? And let's start with um, Kaylin since you're already unmuted. Sure. Okay. So, gosh, this was such a crazy time. I remember it very well where the market crashed and I was watching some of my friends graduate at the time and it was like, holy crap, how are we going to get jobs? This is nuts. And the news was coming out and it was saying that the market was rough and everyone who's graduating might not get a job. And so I really took that to heart and I looked at my skill set and I looked at my passions and I really decided to go all in and believe in myself and say, okay, what are my options here? What's gonna be the best road ahead for me? And the first job I actually applied for, I didn't get. I applied for um, a WSU athletic position in fundraising. And so they decided to hire somebody else within. And at that point I was like, I just, I don't have anything to lose here. So um, it was looking like the market was starting to be saturated in Seattle and I was just really open and willing and I said, okay, um, like what's gonna be a, an enjoyable path for me to take? Because I think that when you step into a job, it's your energy, it's your time and it's your passion. And so you really have to think about what's a position that you can get into that you're gonna be passionate about, that you wanna show up to every day, and that you have a good chance, you have a shot at getting the job. And so for me, um, it was again, fusing that passion and that love of writing and collaborating with groups. And that um, really spurred me to open my mind and open you know, what was possible. So I said, let's just, I'm young and I just graduated. So I looked across the US at alumni relations positions. And at the time, there was a portal that you could access and it would open up a job search for all alumni relations positions. So I used that portal. Um, I also really, really buffed up my resume. I had an expert in the field who was a recruiter and she just picked through my resume with a fine tooth comb and we changed a lot of the wording on my resume to make it really impactful and um, more eye-catching and, and really more reflective of the things that I was able to, that I had accomplished. And so those two things I think were like really big key takeaways that I was open and I was passionate and I, I believed that I could land a job. And so that's when I found the job in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So it was that resume um, that got my foot in the door to the interview to land me that job. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, Bridget, same question to you. How did you kind of feel at the time of your graduation and were you nervous about looking for work? Yeah, I think I graduated in 2010 and things were very grim. Um, I think my friends and I had all decided that um, we probably weren't going to get jobs in our fields and especially where I had picked something that was so specialized. Um, I knew that it was going to be really unlikely that I was going to find a job in my field. So I kind of braced myself my entire senior year to be creative and open to whatever might come along. Um, and I think that just a job experience in different fields can still be applicable to where you want to go. And like Kaylin said, finding something um, that really speaks to you. I had to reframe that maybe I'm going to find something that I feel doesn't align with my passions, but that I can see how it's going to get me to where I want to go someday. Um, and then find motivation in that. So really when I graduated, 
I think I had one friend who was a teacher who got a job. Everybody else in my friend group, we were working at coffee shops and movie theaters and um, it is a hard time. And I don't, I don't want to sugarcoat that for our graduates, graduates who are going to go through that um, right now. Um, and so just trying to find the silver linings and we'll talk a little bit later about different ways we dealt with that. But it really was a, a hard time where you had to reframe a lot of your thinking. Definitely. And I think everyone's glad to have you three here to share your wisdom and, and your experiences. Tony, um, same question to you. Kind of how did you feel about the general attitude um, during your graduation and how you personally felt? Yeah, I think looking back on it, I, I don't think I ever really felt nervous um, or I didn't really realize what I was graduating into until maybe a couple years later when I noticed that mo most of my friends weren't working in the fields that we studied. All of my roommates, I lived with six other guys my senior year and none of them used their degree at all, which I thought was interesting. And it, it didn't click in my head at the time because I was so busy chasing my dreams. Um, I think, I think as far as the market goes, you know, I remember people getting jobs and, you know, having that conversation, that taboo conversation about salaries and things like that. And I just remember thinking, wow, this is like not what I thought it was going to be. Um, and that's probably a big reason why I started my own company was I could follow my passion. And if somebody wasn't going to hire me to do it, I would go do it on my own. And so that's something I think for anybody who does have any sort of or any ounce of entrepreneurial spirit in their body, a, a market like this is a good time to chase that dream because things like rent and hiring other people is kind of uh, a lot more affordable right now or will be um, in the fall. So it, I saw it as an opportunity more so than anything. Um, I saw it as an opportunity for me to hone my craft and to learn more and to continue my education um, personally by reading books. Um, I didn't study business. I actually didn't get into WSU's business school, uh, which is funny because they had me come talk to all their classes all the time now. Um, but my GPA just wasn't strong enough. So I got every business book I could and read it. And, and just like I did in college, I joined every networking group and industry group and um, went to every meeting I could for Kiwanis and, and things like that, the Chamber of Commerce, eventually working my way up to be the president of the Chamber of Commerce here in Pullman. But I just decided to remain involved in network and, and learn from other people. And that's kind of what I planned after I graduated and realized I wasn't going to become some big name record label exec or Ari Gold from Entourage it was kind of what I wanted to be, some, some agent someday. But um, yeah, so things changed and you just got to kind of roll with the punches. Excellent. Thank you. I like that response. I think it helps people see that there's not always just one path to take, which is awesome. Um, we had a question from Rebecca Devon. Uh, this one's for Kaylin. She said, Kaylin, I most closely relate with you with my degree in social science with a focus in psychology, communication, and human development. I have been a nursing assistant for 17 years now and would love to continue to be an advocate for the elderly. Where would you suggest I start looking um, for a job or where should I start my job search? Yeah, um, thank you for that question. And I'd have to hear a little bit more about um, what you're wanting as far as being an adv advocate for the elderly goes. But I loved what Tony said about how this is the time, this is really the prime time because there's really nothing to lose right now. And this is a really big time of innovation and to start new things. And so I think that's really beautiful that you're wanting to step into a new chapter. And so I would just follow that thread of joy and what lights you up and be open and willing to um, what's around you. Like Tony was saying how he got involved in all of these different organizations and chapters, just kind of start like seeing what's around you that is, um, is like I said, gonna light you up. So if that is joining different organizations or looking at different um, elderly homes, um, if there is maybe a way that you can connect somehow and bring services at home that people can tap into using the internet, I think there's a huge potential there too. And so be thinking about like, how can you innovate right now? How can you bring services to people that are meaningful, that people want, that they're gonna use? 
Um, like, is there like at home exercises the elderly can do? There's like a YouTube channel you could start or um, your own program. Like what are, what are things that you naturally enjoy that you're gifted at that you can start putting out there um, into the market in a way that's going to speak to people with both your gifts and what they um, want and enjoy. So I hope that touched on um, what you were asking. And if not, you can message me um, and we can chat more later too. Perfect. Thank you so much. And that was a great question. Keep those questions coming. Um, Bridget, let's start with you for this next one. Um, how was your professional path post-graduation? Were there specific challenges? You kind of touched on this a little bit, but were there specific challenges or was anything easier than you thought it would be kind of as you, you started off on that search? Yeah, so um, I started searching for jobs, like I said, kind of at the mindset that it might be different than what I'm looking for and that that would be okay. Um, and with a backup plan of staying at school and getting a master's degree. So that was kind of my, my level of comfort, I guess. Um, and one thing that I knew I really was passionate about and wanted to do while I was young was travel. Um, and so I started looking for jobs abroad. I thought, if America, I can't get jobs here. Um, and I ended up getting hired and finding a job in Australia. Um, so my plan post-graduation was to move to Australia in January and work at a recruiting office on a college campus. Um, so I thought I had it all figured out. Um, and unfortunately, I didn't get my worker's visa to go to Australia in time to report for my job. Um, so I was working back home. What I had done as a summer job, I worked for the county and I ran their recycling program um, and did some website development for them and worked at a coffee shop. So I convinced them to keep me on um, until I could find a job. So I continued working part-time at the recycling program, part-time at the coffee shop, um, and started doing a lot of things Kaylin was just, was just talking about. I was doing some freelance work. Um, I joined some volunteer organizations and started volunteering different places. Um, I really had a passion for WSU, and so, I came up to WSU a few times and set up appointments with people who are the head of offices or departments that I would be interested in working with. Um, just anything to start building relationships and get seen. Um, a lot of the freelance work I was doing, I would do for free um, just to try to get, to get noticed or to get my name out there and build connections. Um, so my professional path um, at first, I, I was really excited about and kind of tanked, and then um, I would say while I was working at the county in the recycling department and visiting all these people and networking, um, I filled out a hundred, over 150 job applications, um, and that was really wearing, uh, and we'll talk about it, I think, in one of the questions later, but just I think in this time it's really important to take care of, of you mentally and be thinking about um, how your success or lack of success isn't a, isn't a reflection on who you are or what you're qualified to do. It's just simply the state of the economy. So finding I think those volunteer opportunities while it was part of the job hustle, it was just as important for who I was as a person and finding success in those things. Um, and then eventually I did get an interview on WSU's campus with the athletic department, the fundraising office, um, and I started at the front desk there. So athletics was always a passion of mine. I'd never missed a football or basketball game in my four years at WSU. Um, and it was one of the 150 plus applications I happened to submit. Um, and it truly did end up being a passion and a career. Um, that I've built for myself and I haven't tried to leave. Um, so it was what was right for me, even though I got there in kind of an unconventional way. Great, thank you so much. And I think it's helpful to hear, I think a lot of people are having visa and travel, you know, restrictions at this time. So it's, it's comforting that you could still bounce back from that, even though it's kind of a bummer. Um, 
Okay, Tony, let's go to you. Um, I know you talked a bit about this, but um, kind of how your experience after you graduated, um, if you kind of ran into any roadblocks that you had to overcome, if, if anything was easier than you thought it would be, because um, I think your experience is pretty unique. Yeah, I think, um, well, just learning how to run a business was definitely a roadblock in itself. You know, just the intricacies of doing business, especially in collegiate licensed apparel, learning the licensing process. Um, and then growing really, really fast uh, was definitely a roadblock. Everybody thinks like, oh, being a really fast growing company is like all roses. But when you don't have a business degree, you're kind of just have like analysis paralysis, I guess. Um, one thing I will say is the the Cougar network um, is has been amazing to me. And I wasn't afraid to lean on that when I needed it. Um, Cougs First, the Alumni Association, um, people in the athletic funds, uh, everybody just was really supportive of a Cougar owned business. And I'm sure that's the same for people searching jobs and searching for jobs. You know, when I get a stack of resumes, I've, I've employed, you know, 125 people probably over the last nine years. And I would say 110 of them are Cougs. So, um, that's a silver lining in all of this is, um, the Cougar network is really powerful and, and don't be afraid to ask questions to find a mentor. Um, I had a guy who asked me if he's, he's been following my business last year. He asked if he could take me to lunch and pick my brain cause he wanted to start a business. And I said, sure, you know, you're a Coug, you just graduated. He was kind of going through some, some career defining changes. And I went to South Fork here in Pullman. If anybody's familiar with South Fork, it's a great restaurant in Pullman. Um, but he was like 15 minutes late and I was like, you know, this is kind of unfortunate. I, my time is valuable, um, but I'll give him a, another five minutes. Well, he shows up and he's like, I'm so sorry, I'm late. Like traffic was really bad. And I was thinking in my head like, wow, uh, how bad could traffic be in Pullman? And he's like, yeah, I left at like eight this morning or seven this morning. And I was like, wait, where did you come from? He's like, oh, I live in Bothell. And I was like, dude, you drove from Bothell to Pullman to have lunch with me? Are you sticking around? And he's like, no, I'm heading home after this. Um, so I just thought it was really, A, extremely flattering that he would drive five hours each way to have lunch with me. But um, he understood the importance of having a, a, a mentor and leading on a Cougar alumni like myself, like I did when I was starting out. And I've helped him land some really awesome jobs just because I saw that drive and that passion. So having that is just uh, a little bit, obviously don't drive five hours round trip if you don't feel like it, but, um, that's, what's going to separate him from the rest of the people searching for jobs or searching for that mentor. Um, and I was willing to do that when I graduated, um, in 2009, there was a uh, jet blue airlines did an all you can jet pass. I don't know if you guys ever, you guys are probably pretty young, a lot of you on this, this call, but for $700, you can fly anywhere you want in the U S as much as you wanted for 30 days. And I did 30 flights in 30 days to 30 different college campuses. I'd get off the plane. I would walk, like drive to the campus, walk around and just promote my company. And that's what separated me from the other competitors. And so you have to figure out creative ways. Um, a lot of those ideas came from mentors of mine helping me out. And um, I just really can't reiterate the importance and the power of WSU's alumni network um, and business network Cougs First. It, we, I wouldn't have a business if it wasn't for WSU, who's my biggest client, but also my big, biggest advocate too. So. That's awesome. Really cool stories. Um, Kaylin, same question for you. Um, kind of your professional path after graduating and if you've kind of had any roadblocks or challenges that you came across or if anything was easier than you thought it would be. Yeah, I absolutely had roadblocks and challenges <laughs> and I continue to have them. Um, it's just part of life. And I think knowing that is helpful instead of being like, okay, what's the rosy path ahead? Give me that one. But pursuing something that you're passionate about, I think helps to naturally start evening out those challenges because it's worth it. It's worth whatever you're going after. And so that helped me work through a lot of the challenges that I came up against. Um, like I said, the first one was like, am I 
you know, am I going to live here um, in Washington State or am I going to move somewhere for work? And I just felt like I had a better um, chance and opportunity moving. And for me, that was just like what guided me and my belief system. So it was important to me. But I think it's important to listen to your gut and your heart and you have to go about that above anything else. And for me, I just had heard Albuquerque was really cool too. And I wanted to move there and it was neat because I got to um, meet other WSU kooks and um, I was able to network a little bit there. Um, not a ton, but it was awesome to have that cougar influence there. And I think a big challenge for me about taking a job that wasn't in my comfort zone of where I had grown up or the Seattle area where some of my friends were moving after graduation was really like, can I do this on my own? Can I, can I take this leap and this jump? And, you know, I didn't have friends, like a really tight knit group of friends for about a year. So I felt a little bit lonely and I felt um, a little hesitant, like, what am I doing? <laughs> um, but I kept sticking with it because I loved the job that I was doing. I had a tremendous mentor as my boss and I was really growing a lot professionally. And so it was worth it for me to work through those uncomfortable moments of really um, planning my roots and creating something for myself. Um, so the biggest challenge I think was making friends and um, learning how to be in a new place. But WSU really, really taught me how to do that because when I got involved in the sorority and I got involved with the different clubs, it helped me like just have better, I think, communication skills and know how to talk to people and make friends, make connections. And so I brought a lot of those skills that I had discovered at WSU and I brought them to Albuquerque and they just helped me start networking again, just in a new way, um, in a way that I was able to after the recession had hit. That's great. Thank you so much. And I think it's it's nice to hear that sometimes it's okay to be lonely for a little while and it happens to all of us. I think that's important to know during this time too. I apologize if you hear a car alarm going off in the background. I'm not sure what, what that's about. But um, we've gotten a question kind of about um, how to connect with Cougs and how that, that works. And I think I can maybe help with that question a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen really quickly with you. This is particularly helpful now that we're kind of all spreading out a little bit. This is the WSU Alumni Association website, and you can connect with chapters and clubs um, all across the U.S. Um, there are quite a few in Washington, which I think we have the most participants today in Washington, but you can see here um, kind of they're separated by counties. And if you go to these pages, it will list um, the leadership so you can get in touch with these, these chapters and clubs. There's always a running list on the side here of events that are happening in that area. Of course, right now, these events are all online, <laughs> but um, we're hoping that um, we'll get some in-person events, hopefully um, once some restrictions are lifted. So this is a great way to kind of get connected with fellow Cougs that are in your area and network. Um, just like Kaylin was saying, it can be super helpful to find people in your area um, geographically. Um, we also have events here. If you're just looking for a running event list, um, there's an event calendar here or an online event calendar. Um, again, those look pretty similar right now, but that will change in the future. We also have um, a official alumni group of WSU LinkedIn page. Um, so if you search us on LinkedIn, you'll be able to find us. There are currently 15,000 um, members. So it's a very wide um, base, which I think is helpful. And um, you, know, you, can, you can connect with other alum that way. So I just wanted to share those resources in case um, anyone was interested? Let's see. We had a question. I'm wondering if any of our panelists um, know how to answer this. This is from Lita Crossfield. Um, first of all, she said, thank you all. This is very encouraging. You're also supportive and positive. Um, I graduated from WSU with a bachelor's in humanities. 
um, uh, after a 15 year hiatus from college and then went on to earn a bachelor's in English from CWU and now I'm nearly completing an MFA in creative writing. Um, and she kind of talks about her career, she's writing a novel now, and she's asking as an older, quote, young-hearted person, what would be your advice um, in regards to years of experience when looking for work? So I wonder if anyone has any points on that they'd like to share. Um, I can take that one, I guess. Um, yeah. I would say, Definitely be open minded to um, to different opportunities that that you think might not fit what you want. Um, we've had older people um, I don't know how old old is, but um, I'm fairly old for my company, but we have had people that have had multiple careers and and in their second careers and and they've started out at a, at a position that we thought was right for them and realized that they were gonna be something way different and wanted to try it and have succeeded really, really well at it. So coming in as an account coordinator, which is somebody who processes orders for us and makes everything on the back end happen, then realized they're really good at um, something different and then eventually worked their way up to um, my vice president. She's not older, but you know she's um, about five years older than me. So at my company, that's fairly old, um, but yeah, she started out as an account coordinator and went into sales, which she didn't think she would want to do. And now she pretty much runs the company alongside me. So um, just being open-minded to new things and, you know, technology wasn't her strong suit, but when she saw our systems um, and how we ran things was very old school. Uh, just, I didn't really have the techno technology background. She thought she would look at what you know, CRMs are kind of the popular thing in business orgs right now. So she's like, we need to update this. And, you know, I didn't, out of anybody, I didn't expect her to go get a, a, a certification in Salesforce, which is a, the biggest CRM in the world. And she just went and did it on her own. So be open to that kind of thing. And she created enough value for the company that she's basically irreplaceable now. So, um, and that just happened with her wanting to try new things and being open-minded um, and, really just making herself the most valuable employee that we have. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, so let's, let's go through, Kaylin, let's start with you. There's been kind of some questions about what you do now and kind of talking about your profession right now. So Kaylin, can you tell us a little bit more about what you do and about your company? Yeah, so first I also want to just quickly add on to Amber, I love the resources you shared and those were a huge help to me when I graduated. And um, another one that I've been using recently has been Facebook, um, alum the Facebook alumni WSU uh, pages. So those are the chapters that Amber's sharing on the website that have the Facebook page. And so I found a Central Oregon one and I have already connected with some friends from college and I'm excited to go to watch parties there. So that's another um, helpful thing that I used uh, or that I have used. Um, but as far as what I'm doing right now, it's fairly new. So it's still kind of like in the inception phase, but it's very, it's been a really big passion project for me and just kind of a fusion of all of the different things that I love to do, um, just kind of funneled into one business. And so, I, um, I started this business because I was really stressed at work when I was teaching. And at that time, um, this was probably three years or so ago, I, teaching was the number one stressful job in the United States. And I was using meditation to de-stress every day. And I was also using it to tap into creativity and new ideas in the classroom that I had never come up with before. Um, I had a lot of anxiety and worry and stress. And so um, I had been meditating enough to where it kind of had built up and I was starting to see the benefits of it. And I was not stressed going into work. And I thought that was something that was really profound and huge. And I um, just felt like people needed that in their lives. And so um, as hard as it was to step away from teaching and my students, I also had this passion emerging in me that I felt like people really needed this. People need to go to work and not feel stressed, even though they like their job, right? It doesn't mean that 
you are not going to be stressed if you like your job. Right. And so, um, I started building that business on the side as I was teaching and I was, um, just organically growing it through social media. And I was able to get all of my clients off of Instagram, just from sharing, um, the services. And I, um, just dove in and I got my hands on everything I could, different mentors who um, also taught meditation. I worked with them. I studied with them. I read books and I took online courses about how to run an online business. And so I just kind of fused all of those together, um, trauma-informed practices in the classroom and my love of writing. And so I just funneled all of those into my business and um, right now I'm working on writing books that I'm going to be releasing, um, as part of my business, but it's just been a lot of fun. It's been really challenging, the most challenging thing I've ever done, but, um, it's, it's been really rewarding and I'm not looking back and it's continuing to grow. So I'm really excited. And I also have a YouTube channel about, uh, meditations, how to de-stress, all of that good stuff, really practical, real life, um, things that people can use, whatever job they have um as well excuse me thank you so much um bridget let's go to you what do you do um currently with the cougar athletic fund yeah so when i started at the cougar athletic fund um i worked at the front desk so i was a receptionist and that was mostly customer service um around people's donations to scholarships for our student athletes um, and different benefits and whatnot that came along with that regarding um, football and basketball. And so I did that for two to three years. Um, and as that, I got to also serve as support for some of our regional fundraisers. We have offices in, um, at the time, Tri-Cities, Vancouver, and Seattle and Spokane. Um, and so I would work with those regional teams to host some of our fundraising events. Um, to raise money for student athlete scholarships. Um, a lot of the behind the scenes things. Um, and our athletic director at about three years in at that job had decided that our fundraisers really needed to be spending time focused on raising money and planning an event is a big task. And so that was about six months of their year that was focused on planning these events and that they wanted to hire someone to do that. Um, so it's it's funny i um i went to the person who was going to supervise the position and said i was interested um and to this day i have a really wonderful relationship with this man but he told me that um, i was not really qualified for the job and that while i do a lot of um the reception pieces of the job being an event planner is a, is a lot bigger thing than that and it was going to be a national search um, so the next day I went into the office and I said, I heard you, I heard everything you said, um, but I found a passion here that I wasn't expecting to find when I started my job at the front desk. Um, and I'm someone who I had told myself after three years working the front desk, it was a new time for me to move on. Um, I'm not a person who likes to start a job and leave. So I wanted to commit some amount of time to them, but I also wanted to grow and do something that I was passionate about not necessarily working at the front desk, um, but having the opportunity to put together an event that our fans and alumni could experience and enjoy, um, and also at the same time, raise money to support our absolutely outstanding um, student athletes. Um, they're, they're amazing, they have amazing stories, um, really resonated with me. So I told him, you're gonna see my application in the pool and no matter what happens, I'm gonna come back to this office every day being the same person that I always have been. Um, and so I ended up getting the job and he was right, I was not prepared. <laughs> I was not qualified for the job, I was not ready for the job. Um, but like Kaylin was talking about, and Tony alluded to this too, um, when you're doing something that you really care about, it doesn't matter how much effort or how many hurdles come up, you find a way to figure it out. So it was online courses, it was finding mentors, it was taking my computer home and working an extra three to four to six hours, depending on the time of year, to make sure that I did um, my job well. And I can do my job in less than 50% of the time that I did when I first started now. Um, but so I guess that was a long answer to say, I run those events and then in this last year I've grown 
um, to taking over. I do all the stewardship, which really means showing our donors what kind of impact they're having in the lives of people that they're giving to, um, to some of our top donors um, to the athletic department. So that's been a huge passion of mine. I get to care for people and use my creative outlets. Um, so I absolutely adore my job. You're really good at your job, by the way. I've been to all of your events and <laughs> I've, I've known you since you started and I think they have just gotten so amazing in the past few years. So nice job. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. And um, Tony, tell us a little bit about College Hill and kind of what you do um, every day. Yeah, um, well, right now it's it's changing because my company does a lot of custom apparel and promotional products for events and um, those events aren't happening right now. So we're really pivoting to online virtual pop up stores for businesses, um, nonprofits, bars and breweries, basically anybody who wants to sell apparel. Um, we're actually doing some merchandise for virtual conferences, which is something I never thought I would attend. I attended my first one last week and it was crazy. There was a virtual stage. You can raise your hand to go up on stage. There was reception. There was breakout sessions. There was a 15 minute networking where you just randomly get paired with somebody kind of like you were at a conference and you are standing next to them in the buffet line or whatever. But um, it was three minutes with uh, five different random people. It was, it was awesome. But um, what we're doing is we're sending um, packages to the people's homes before the virtual conference. So they have their swag, you know, they have their water bottle on their desk and their lanyard still and all that stuff so um, we're trying to come up with some fun creative ideas to keep uh, business moving forward um, it's definitely challenging uh, with so much of what we do for universities being up in the air still for fall we don't really know um, but our big clients like Microsoft and and things like that are really helping us out right now so um, yeah that's what we do Pr promotional products and apparel mainly for events so uh, we have worked with Bridget and the Cougar Athletic Fund quite a bit so. That's great. Um, and we had a question for you, Tony, from Rebecca Devon. Um, how do you separate family and being a business owner? My husband owns his own business and has asked me to take over the books. How do you differentiate between the two? Oh, that's tough. Um, my wife, she teaches the fifth grade. And so she's uh, going through some major changes right now as well, trying to teach a bunch of 10 and 11 year olds uh, via Zoom or Google Classroom. Um, but she has helped me out a lot right now, um, coming in after school, coming up to our store, because everything, uh, we have a retail store in Pullman as well, um, but all of my student employees are no longer in Pullman, so uh, that leaves me and my wife shipping out hundreds of packages a day, uh, which is interesting um, and definitely a test on our marriage, because I've been doing this for nine years, and she's a teacher, so um, asking her to, to step in and help me with the business is tough. Um, I think, I think the reason that she's willing to do it is I, is I, in the beginning, you know, when I was starting the business, we were just dating and, um, you know, having that conversation before we, we were going to be married was that when she marries me, she marries this business as well. It is half her business now. And so giving her that sense of ownership um, maybe helps her understand that her, um, that her work really is, is helping to move our family forward, not just you know, because I need help shipping out packages or she's helped me do everything from deliveries to um, cleaning, cleaning up there. She doesn't have any bookkeeping skills, but I can imagine um, if your husband owns a business, you know, you, you could really help him out right now, especially in these hard times. And uh, just having that sense of ownership will maybe help you get over that, um, the challenge of working with a significant other, because there will be challenges. Um, obviously being at home all day and then going up to our store you know, for a few hours every night is tough. So I'm um, just taking that pride and ownership of a business, I think is the first step. Perfect, thank you so much. All right, so let's go back to um, one of our questions here. What advice would you give anyone who is looking for work during this challenging time? And um, let's go to Kaylin first for this one. Um, Kaylin, do you have any advice for maybe recent graduates or anyone who's been furloughed? Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. I would just say the biggest thing that you can do is follow your heart. And if you look at your life, um, the times that you have, they've gotten you to, I think, beautiful places. At least that's how I feel for myself. And so 
if that means going and working at a coffee shop and then pursuing a passion project on the side, do that. If it means going after, you know, the job of your dreams, do that. You are in the driver's seat of your life and you, you really have to go with your gut and what speaks to you. And then everything will unfold from there, but trust yourself, trust your decisions. You've made them before you've gotten to this point. And so you can only go up from here. Um, I think now's the time to take, take the chance and listen to yourself and make it fun. Enjoy it. Um, there's a lot of opportunity for innovation right now. And it's, I'm just really excited for you guys. I'm really grateful to be here and I just hope you all the best. Um, it's exciting being a kook. Like Tony was saying, the network is huge and amazing. Tap into it, use it to your benefit, make the connections, make the friends, and give it all you've got. Thank you, that's very encouraging. Um, Bridget, you next. Um, do you have any advice you would give anyone who's looking for work during this time? Yeah, I'll echo what Kaylin said. Um, just a personal experience I had during my job search, I said, uh, I, I, um, I guess I, I hate saying this to myself, but I'm kind of an overachiever. So when I tell you I filled out more than 150 applications in three months time, I feel like someone, I wish someone would have told me to just relax a little bit too. Um, you know, like open doors, um, do your best to open all the doors you can and build all the relationships you can, but also find some peace. Um, I think this is a really unique opportunity to grow as both individual people and professionals. Um, it's just a really unique time to sit down and be reflective of who we are and what we want to be and how we get there and to learn new things. And so I think um, in the same breath, make sure you're also doing that. Um, but in those 154 applications, I did also receive an interview and a job offer um much earlier than when i got the wsu one and it was a better offer than what i had at wsu but it didn't feel right you know while i was open-minded to doing something different than what i thought i was doing it the fit just didn't feel like it was the right thing for me um and i turned it down and i got a lot of uh, not not the best feedback i got a lot of negative feedback for making that choice um but do be sure that you you stick um, to who you are and be true to who you are. And like Kaylin said, follow your gut. Um, if I would have just taken what was a really great opportunity because it was an opportunity in a time where there really weren't many opportunities, um, I wouldn't be in the, in the situation that I am today. So um, like I said, be creative, go, go meet with people, volunteer places that you're passionate about or you could see a future be willing to do some freelance jobs, be like Tony and Kaylin um, and start your own business. Um, and then online, there are so many, I don't need to preach to you the tools and resources there are to create a creative cover level to make you stand out or to use social media to help you find jobs. Um, but yeah, get, get creative in your search, but also um, stick to who you are, and continue to be open-minded. Uh, you might be surprised in the path that opens up in front of you. Perfect. Thank you so much. And Tony, saying to you, what advice would you give anyone who's looking for work at this time? Yeah, I think I just, I'll echo what they say. Just um, find something that I guess fulfills you. And um, if you follow your passion, I think good things will come. I think um, we have people that, that have worked at College Hill that have been extremely passionate and maybe their skill set wasn't the, the, the same as others, but that passion shine through and those are the ones that end up sticking with us for a lot of years. Um, don't, don't be afraid to fail. I've failed a lot of times, multiple businesses have failed, but uh, I'm able to look at the lessons in everything. And so um, when something doesn't feel right, don't be afraid to move on, but make sure that you're leaving, whether it's a position or uh, internship or whatever on good terms, because I, I do believe that you know, everybody who's part of your journey is, is, um, is really important and you don't want to burn any bridges along the way. Um, we're very fortunate that everybody that has ever worked at College Hill for the most part, we still consider really good friends and have turned into customers. And, you know, it's my job as the CEO to make sure that they had a good experience um, and leave a better employee than they started. So um, 
I think just continue to follow your heart. Uh, there's going to be options out there. This is not a permanent world that we live in right now. Things are going to return to normal. The, the market is going to bounce back. Now is the time to um, educate yourself and just become a better pers person, um, personally and professionally. And um, don't be afraid to ask for help. I think that's a big one. People are now, they're college graduates and I'm on my own. And, um, but don't be afraid to ask for that help because there's going to be a lot of people that, that are going to help you along the way and um, help you on your journey. So, and I'm here to help if anybody, if anybody needs it, they can, they can reach out. Perfect. Well, uh, just wanted to say thank you so much um, to Tony, Bridget, and Kaylin for taking the time to talk to us today. I think it was really helpful and um, a lot of positive energy. Um, we have in the chat, Kaylin posted her email address if you'd like to reach out to her. Um, same with Tony. <laughs> and um, I'm sure they would love to connect with you on LinkedIn if you would prefer that. Um, so I will also be emailing out um, some of the resources that the Alumni Association offers. I'll include um, a link to those chapter pages that I showed you. Um, and I believe you can access the Facebook pages through those. Um, it's a great way to connect, um, as well as um, some resources we have posted online for career and professional development. So I hope that helps. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Our next Cougar Career Academy event will take place on June 10th. Um, we're going to be talking about virtual interviews um, and kind of how to best take those on and some skills that are really important for those. Um, Kimberly Carper is going to be our presenter and we're really excited to hear from her. So um, if you have any questions um, about anything today, you can email me. Um, or you can email alumni events at wsu.edu and we'll get your questions answered. And um, again, thank you so much for tuning in and we hope you have a great day. Go Cougs. Go Cougs. Go Cougs. Bye. Bye.